there's always a chance. <laughs> but let's see if we can get we can get through it. So, um, you know, I should I should probably warn everybody before we get into this section of the of the keynote um, that this is this we're going to move very fast through uh, you know a lot of very technical stuff. So as they say on television, now is the time to get your geek on. Because we're going to be in a geek moment here very, very shortly. So, um, you already said it, it might be best, I think, since not everybody here is, you know, is, a, is a radio expert familiar with, you know, with radio technology, to start with an analog radio, typical. Um, today, contemporary um, analog radio, uh, design and just get um, and get everybody granted, particularly the RF section, because I think we'll we'll all agree that the baseband is now, for the most part, a solved problem in the digital domain. Uh, correct. So uh, this uh, slide shows the typical analog uh, traditional radio, and uh, you can see that it's primarily analog uh, blue. It has a lot of uh, analog blocks that uh, use a lot of inductors, a lot of analog devices. And that's why it doesn't scale, as we were saying earlier. Mm -hmm. It also usually takes a lot of tweaking to get it right. It might take multiple respects to do it right. And that's why people typically do traditional radios in older processes when they are mature and stable. And therefore, we don't integrate typically with a microprocessor. That's right. Most, today, most radios are, are separate chips. Right. And those, those passes through the fab to make the, the tiny tweaks to the, the analog portions take a lot of time. I mean, months can go by for, you know, for a pass, so it's, we're clearly motivated to do it. So when you started thinking about how to do this in the, in the digital domain, was it, was it just, well, okay, we've got you know, this analog block, we just have to bring, you know, build the digital equipment, or did, did, you, take a, did you take a different approach? Uh, no, we actually had to uh, completely, basically rethink uh, radio operation uh, from a digital perspective. Uh, we want to attack this problem as a computational problem, as you said. And in many cases, it was not just uh, converting an analog block to a digital equivalent. In many cases, we really had to invent new things that uh, uh, basically would work optimally with fast transistors and would scale well. So, I mean, you did literally go back to the books. You went back to those fundamental equations and, and imagined how you would build a special computer to solve them. Something like that. But uh, when we actually had to implement uh, things, we actually were not able to find a lot of things. There was nothing. So, well, your job is to make the impossible possible. So that's what you, that's what you do. So, um, you know, so break this down for us. I mean, this was a 10-year quest from the time Pat issued that challenge, you may not have imagined it as a challenge, but it was a challenge for us. Uh, you know, how did you, you know, tell us how you went about doing it, tell us the story. I mean, this is, this is really exciting moment. Yeah, it was a monumental effort because as we said, we really had to build this uh, capability from the ground up and really rethink the fundamentals of radio operation. Uh, now I will uh, discuss a couple of blocks here. We don't have time for too many uh, blocks, but we will specifically focus on two of these blocks. Uh, we'll start with the digital frequency synthesizer, which is one of our best, uh, first uh, important results. Okay. Uh, so when we did the digital frequency synthesizer, uh, that was the only integrated frequency synthesizer that could do Wi-Fi and 4G uh, specifications. Uh, so at that point we realized that we, were, we had something. Uh, it was digital and it was the only one that could do it. So I so remember, was, uh, I remember yeah. these great internal debates. I remember making a trip to Israel where I got yelled at by engineers okay. of, you know, of all races, colors, and creeds. And, you, know, you guys are crazy and this will never work and, and on and on. It so, takes time. It is so different from what we are used to. Yeah, the extent is actually. Yeah. Okay. Um, so when we, um, you know, when we look at the at the synthesizer, you know, which was this first important important block, did that did that give you um, confidence that um, these circuits would scale? I mean, this is sort of the fundamental problem with the analog. Uh, yes, uh, we had the feeling and the intuition that things would scale, but uh, we actually confirmed this feeling in the process of the years that we see here 
uh, a couple of examples from actual fabricating the digital synthesizers. And you see going from 90 nanometers generation to 32 nanometer, a dramatic scaling in the area of uh, the digital synthesizer and also the power dissipation. And we predict that things are going to continue uh, going to 14 nanometers, yeah. for example. Yeah, so this must have been a big boost in, in confidence. Yes. Okay, okay. Let's, let's take another block. Uh, so one of the last blocks that uh, came together was the digital phase modulator. This is a key part of our uh, uh, digital transmitter architecture, this different transmitter we developed. Uh, so digital phase modulators, so they existed before. In fact, uh, Intel's uh, cellular division, uh, they Intel have mobile communication. Intel mobile communication. Mobile communication. Uh, they have a digital phase modulator in uh, a cellular part. Uh, they yeah, the published it recently in a product. Uh, but uh, that works for, uh, it is targeted for 3G operations, so it is smaller bandwidth, it's up to 5 megahertz. Mm -hmm. uh, error channels. Yeah, so in our case, we have to deal with a much wider channels that are required for Wi Fi. So our system was designed up to 40 megahertz. Uh, Wi-Fi operation. So we really had to again come up with a lot of. So I, I recall asking this operation. question in review once. I said, I said, this sounds like it's going to require some new mathematics, not found in the textbooks. It requires some very creative uh, mathematical manipulation, of course, as was definitely. Yeah, you put it so definitely mathematical yeah. manipulation. <laughs> All mathematics is manipulation. Okay. Um, so, um, you know, now we've got all the blocks, can we build the radio? Yes, we actually also have the complete radio. Okay. Uh, yeah. This yeah. is uh, the first complete digital Wi-Fi radio that uh, we have developed. Uh, it operates up to the, the more demanding uh, Wi-Fi requirements than the 40 megahertz bandwidth. Uh, it has been implemented in a 32 nanometer Intel process. Uh, and it is already, the power efficiency is on par with uh, the best analog designs that we could find in the literature. And uh, we know that our radio will keep improving because there's all flip-flops, transistors, switches. Well, we know that other radios are actually not going to improve the analog radios. So we expect that this is going to become better and better moving forward. It's already on par. So I've waited 10 years for this moment, Jorgis. Can we see the radio? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, this is our transceiver board uh, here that you see, and uh, we're zooming into the actual uh, uh, digital radio here in the middle. Uh, well, all of these are test connectors. That, that's the chip itself. Yeah, the black one. Uh -huh. So the output of our digital transmitter comes here to this uh, <coughs> cable to this transmit antenna. It's been transmitted to the other side, uh, receive antenna, our receiver. Uh, this is the same transceiver, digital transceiver operating in the receive mode on this side. So, I mean, this might be, we can think of this as sort of the access point and that's the client end at that. Transmitter receiver. Yeah, okay, yeah. but same chip. Yeah, and here's the configuration chip. Right. Okay, so uh, I know you've got all this test gear here, but best in the interest of time if we just look at the application you, you have running. So yeah, we have the... Uh, trust me, this meets all of the specifications that we've been talking about. But let's just look at the app running. Uh, we have a video streaming right now. It's a good quality video uh, going through our system or this entire link. Okay, um, but how do, we, how do we know you aren't faking this? Uh, you can uh, try to block the antenna signal. Okay. Come over here. Now it is going to take a few seconds because there is some buffering and I'm coding on the system to actually stop. <laughs> I have transparent hands. It is very good that coding it works. <laughs> Two hands. <laughs> now you have to wait this the slow part. <laughs> and stop. Okay. I wouldn't work so hard if <laughs> we were faking it. 
Okay. So there you go. from past challenge to today. Now actually, I should check that. Pat didn't just ask for a digital radio. He asked for a digital radio that you could integrate on a chip with other compute elements, blocks, memories, registers, I.O. What about the you full chip? remember that, okay? So here it is for you. So this is actually radio for you. So this is uh, well, a test strip. Not so free, but anyway. Uh, this is a research test strip we developed. It's uh, called Rose Point. It's a 32 nanometer, the first test strip that integrates a Wi Fi uh, radio together with two auto cores and all other required uh, digital circuits. So two atom cores and the radio. Radio, not so pretty Intel. <laughs> All right, that's just uh, that's just terrific, terrific, Orgos, and 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 really, I you know, I kind of get choked up here if I let myself go. Uh, it's so great to see it. So, um, so you know, what's what's left to do? What's next uh, on the agenda? Uh, primarily taking this radio to uh, productization, uh, we're developing the technology pieces. Uh, yeah. so other people have to. Now, you know, while, it, while it's mo you know, nearly completely digital, right? Aren't there one or two analog elements still still left? Uh, there are a couple of small things here. There. there are a couple of things that will always be analog. For example, the output of the power amplifier is this an analog signal. Uh, but there are a couple more things that uh, we can keep improving. For example, we can put a little more data conversion, a few more bits in the ABC that can further uh, digitize the receiver. Okay. Sounds good. Well, thanks, Ergus. It's just been great. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, it's not every keynote we get, uh, we get the opportunity to share with you.